Hello everyone and welcome to another of my videos. I'm David Forino and this is AI Solutions. So in this video we're going to build a very cool project which is going to combine AI and IoT devices. We are going to do face detection and recognition on hardware like Jetson Nano and Raspberry Pi. And the two are going to communicate via MQTT protocol. So this is a very useful and cool project for our smart AI home. So if you like this kind of content, please give it a like. Remember, it's for free and it really helps out the channel. In the video description, I'm going to leave all the timestamps so you can skip to the section that you are interested the most. So I would say, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's list down all the hardware that is going to be needed for this project. We have the Raspberry Pi 4. This is a 2 gigabyte model. You can choose any version of the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 models or even a, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, but I would not recommend lower than that. And this is going to act as a MQTT broker. So the purpose of this is just to basically act as a server that receives the messages. Then you're going to need any Raspberry Pi, doesn't matter which model it is. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi and a Raspberry Pi camera. So in this case, I have the two that I used for my previous video for the AI surveillance system. So this is a Raspberry Pi Zero portable with a LiPo battery. This is a Raspberry Pi 3A Plus with a power bank in a case so that it's portable. Uh, it's up to you. You can under, uh, do the same that I did. And I will leave the link in the video description to, to that video so you can uh, also copy the 3D pin in the case. But if you want to choose any other Raspberry Pi or any other solution that you want, of course you can, it's going to work. Last but not least, we have the Jetson Nano. This is the 4 gigabyte model. And this is where the deep learning algorithm is going to run. So the purpose of this is just basically to get the image coming from the Raspberry Pi that you have chosen, apply deep learning on it, and then the output, you can use it in whatever way you want. This is going to be needed for the second part of the video. Okay, so here we are on the Raspberry Pi 4 acting as MQTT broker. So here we have two options. The first option is just to use it as a headless Raspberry Pi. And that's totally fine, what I also recommend. The other option is that you can install the uh, Raspberry Pi OS desktop version so that you have a fully uh, desktop uh, on your uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, and this is recommended in case you don't have a laptop and you want to actually visualize data stream from the uh, Raspberry Pi, which runs the NQTT client. So in my case, I'm connected via SSH. So I have a SSH connection. And in my case, inside anyway, I'm going to visualize the stream data from my laptop. The only thing that we need to do on the Raspberry Pi is to run this command. Uh, so basically, we install the uh, Mosquito and Mosquito clients. So we execute the code. In case you want to use this Raspberry Pi not only as a NQTT broker, but also to visualize the stream data uh, at the beginning, maybe for the setup, then first of all, you need to run sudo apt-get install python3 pip, unless it is already installed, and press enter. And then pip3 install paho mqtt and uh, opencv country python for actually then uh, visualize then the data. As I mentioned, those two commands have to be launched only if you don't want to use your laptop. If you want to use your laptop, like in my case, then those, um, those lines then have to be executed on your, on your laptop. So, of course, in case it's a Linux, then it's going to be sudo apt-get install uh, python3 pip. If you have Windows, then pip should be already installed. So, just do pip3 install um, powernqtt and opencv country python. Okay, so now I just switched to the Raspberry Pi that is going to stream the data, so the MQTT client. And in this case, we have a, a Raspberry Pi OS Lite, so no desktop version. And I highly recommend not to use the desktop version, especially if you're using the 
uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's just going to be much faster uh, in this way. So the first thing that we need to do is to run sudo apt update. Now we need to install git, so we're going to type sudo apt get install git. Once git is installed, we can just clone the repository by typing git clone and the repository. Once it's done, just go into the folder, so cd face recognition IoT. Once you're there, you can type ls to see all the files inside. And the only thing you need to do is to type sudo bash setup.sh. This will take quite a lot of time because it's installing all the dependencies. So be patient and once everything is done, it's going to reboot automatically. So you can just uh, grab a cup of coffee and come back when it's done. Now we can go through the usage and I'm going to show you how actually to use those two scripts. So uh, we just type Python 3, then we give the path to the uh, Py file. We will start with video stream and then we type minus H so that you can print the help command. And as you can see, we have a few parameters. We have the broker IP. So this is actually the IP address of the Raspberry Pi that we set up as a uh, NQTT broker. Then we have the topic, so in case we want to uh, use a different topic, where to send uh, all the data. And then we have the max FPS, so the maximum uh, desired FPS value. In this case, uh, re it really depends on the performance on the Raspberry Pi. So for the Raspberry Pi 3A+, Plus, you can expect around 10 frames a second when you're also using face detection. For the Raspberry Pi, 0w actually drops quite a lot it goes to roughly two frames a second by default is set to uh, five frames a second and i think it's pretty much enough uh, consider that if you're using only one raspberry pi to stream the data then it shouldn't be much of an issue but i don't know if you want to set up for example 20 raspberry pi streaming data uh, don't go to uh, fps value too high because of course then the traffic might get kind of congested and then finally, the last parameter is, is resize, which is going to resize the image. And then you can see here width and height. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will leave all the parameters as default, except the broker IP, this, this we need to type. Uh, of course, we will also pass the face detection because we want to uh, recognize the face. So we want to have the cropped area on the face. And uh, the re for the resize, since later on we're going to train a neural network, leave the, um, the size of the image as is, which is going to be 128 by 128, uh, because later on we're going to use also another data set with the same size, and then uh, we will be done the network from that. Okay, so now we can launch the script with the command that we're going to need for this tutorial. So we're going to pass the broker IP, as I mentioned. So this is going to be the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So in my case, it's 192.168.1.11. The Raspberry Pi running the MQTT broken, of course. And then I will pass also the parameter minus F. So it will also do uh, face detection uh, directly on the Raspberry Pi and then send the image. So we can press enter. It started the stream. It's not detecting the face because I'm not in front of the camera. So now we can go on the laptop and actually visualize this data. Okay, so now as you can see, we are on my laptop. So first of all, let's see the usage of this script. So viewstream.py. We can see that also here we have the parameter of broker IP. So uh, again, the IP of the NQTT broker, so the Raspberry Pi. Again, also here we have the topic. Here in this case, we have also the timeout. So is the timeout to close the live view window, but keeps the connection. So uh, this is still gonna be active, but with this command by default is 15 seconds, and we can set it on a different uh, value such that after a certain amount of seconds of not receiving a streaming from, uh, from other devices, then uh, it just basically collapse all the windows. Uh, and then finally, we have the save tier, so the directory where we want to store the images. 
because we're going to store those images because we need to build our data set. And if this argument is given, it will not show any image. So first I want to show you how actually the data looks like. So now we're going to visualize the streaming coming from the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to call Python 3, view stream.py, and then I pass the broker IP and press enter. And as you can see, there is my, my face in a 128 by 128 square. Okay, so now it's finally time to start to build our data set. So what I recommend is that for each person that you want to recognize the face, you're gonna launch this program uh, with, with those commands. So on top of passing the, the broker IP, we also give the parameter save there and we give a name to the directory. So in this case, it's gonna be my data set. Uh, you can give the name of the person, so in my case, can be David or whatever, uh, whatever you prefer. So for each person, you need to run this command so that it's gonna build a folder with all the images inside. So now I can press enter. As I mentioned, you will not see anything, uh, you will not visualize actually the data, you're just going to um, store it directly. And as I mentioned, it's gonna be roughly five, five frames a second. So try to move your face a little bit around such that you have a little bit of variety. Try, if you have glasses, take them off and take them on. Uh, maybe with different light conditions so that you can build a pretty vast data set in different uh, uh, condition for the face so that it's not always the same. And once you're done, you can just press Ctrl C and let's see now how the data set look like. Okay, so now in the folder of the, of the project, as you can see, there is the folder My Dataset, so that the name that we specified before. We can open it up, we can see that it's the date of today. We can open this up and we can see lots of images already collected. You can see that some, for example, in this case, it didn't work properly uh, because it focused basically on the mouth. Um, so later on, we will have to, to clean a few of this data. And as you can see, every image has its own unique name and that's basically it. So what I would recommend is uh, create a lot of variety, as I mentioned, take off your glasses, move the light in a different position, and try to get something around uh, at least 500 images per person. Um, and then, of course, the more the better. So then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to recognize the face based on the data set that you have collected. Okay, so now for the people who are interested into the code to, to understand how it works, we will go through it and explain actually what's happening inside. So we will start from video stream.py. So of course we start with importing some libraries. Uh, then we have the first function, the size. So basically con um, it's just used for the uh, arc parser to accept uh, a specific way the the size, so uh, as a width, comma, height. Um, so nothing crazy. Then we go into the first function. That's the, actually the, the main function, the most important one, which is face detection. So it accepts a cascade method, the image, and the scale factor. So what it does is to apply face detection to the given image. If one face is detected, then the image is cropped around the face that is detected uh, plus a delta. So we're gonna increase a little bit the, uh, the bounding box so that we can compensate for the error as you can see in this part. So if there is no face, then returns none. And if there are multiple faces, then it just returns the, the biggest one. And by biggest one, uh, is going to take, of course, the one that occupies the bigger area, the biggest area. That means the, the face which is closer to the, to the camera, then it's going to be picked. Cascade and image are pretty much self-explanatory. And the uh, uh, scale factor is the parameter that specifies how much the image size is reduced at each image scale. Um, so also here, nothing much going on. We just get the the size of the image, we convert it to grayscale, then we detect the faces, right? And uh, uh, at this point, if the face is one or, or bigger than one, then we get the coordinates, 
uh, x, y, and then width and height. And then we increase a little bit uh, uh, the dimensions uh, so that we can compensate the error, as I mentioned before. You can play around with these parameters, but I found them to be pretty good. Then we have this function, which is pause. What it does is as simple as that. It basically pause the program uh, so that we can stay at the uh, FPS rate that we specified. Then we go into the argument parser. So here we accept all the uh, arguments from the from the command line, and then uh, we store them as variables. Um, here we basically just load the uh, hard cascade front of face default. So remember that to detect a face, it has to be a front of face. At this point, then we start with the actual loop. So first we open the um, the, the camera. Okay, so we get the camera object. And uh, at this point, we start the while true loop. So we get a frame, we apply face detection, and if there is no face detected, it just prints face non detected and it just pauses for the amount of time that has to be paused. Otherwise, um, it resize the frame and convert it into a string. It's, it's important, so we need to convert it into a string at this point, and we can do it by just with this simple line of code. So we encode it into bytes and then we send the image via NQTT and we just pass the, the topic, the image as a, as a byte and, uh, and yeah, to the host name and then we pause the program. So as you see, it's pretty simple. Basically capture the frame, uh, apply face detection, convert it to string, to, to bytes and then send and publish the message. Very straightforward. Now we will take a look at the other program, so viewstream.py. Also in this case, we start with importing all the libraries that are necessary. And here we have the argument parser again, so that we can uh, accept the commands from the command line. And then here we have a few functions, which is on connect, on disconnect, on message show, and on message save. On connect is pretty much self-explanatory, so that's what happened when the client connects and uh, uh, it just prints the message and is subscribed to the topic. So in case we, we disconnect and then reconnect later on, then it automatically resubscribe to the topic. Then we have on disconnect, and of course it's gonna destroy all the windows that eventually are open. And then we have on message show, and this is called in case we want to actually see the the picture on screen and uh, uh, as you can see what we do here is basically just decoding the message then we show it and we just wait in the function on message save instead we just give it a unique name to the file and then we just save the, the, the string that it's actually coming so at this point then we go into the setup for the client so Nothing crazy, depending on the argument, we decide whether we want to uh, call the on save or on message save or on message show. So depending if you want to show or save the images. And here, in case we want to save the images, we, we create then the folder. So with the actual time, we just basically call the loop forever. In this part of the code, instead, we are going to show actually the live video. So also here is very straightforward. We have a while true loop. In case we, using control C, we stop the program, print just program interrupted, and anyway, at the end, it's gonna disconnect no matter what. And in this case here, we just have, we force the client uh, to loop, so to create this uh, forcing loop. And in case we are not receiving data within the timeout that we set up, then we're gonna destroy all the windows. Whether you want to implement AI into your business or you just need consultancy from a machine learning expert, I'm the right person for you. From acquiring data till deployment, my multiple years experience will provide you full support which will help you to boost your business. To find out more, check the link in the video description. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this kind of content, let me know with a thumbs up and I hope to see you in my next video.